I believe that the importance of the psychedelics is primary here and that it doesn't simply have to do with the fact that they synergize cognition, which they do do, and, and the synthetics as well as the natural ones, but it's deeper than that. It's that we have a secret history knowledge of which has been lost to us and only is now recoverable in the light of the kind of mindset that becomes possible to us if we accept the new paradigm. And what this secret history is and has to do with and how it relates to the Gaian mind and the world soul is that we, we are... Uh, the victims of a, an a instance of traumatic abuse in childhood as a species because a symbiotic relationship with the world girdling intelligence of the planet which was mediated through plants through shamanism i mean it wasn't an abstraction it was an experience was uh, eventually broken up and disrupted by uh, progressive climatic uh, drying of uh, the Eurasian and African landmass. And so this is literally the fall into history, the expulsion from Eden. All these primary myths of a golden age found and lost have to do with the fact that once we lived in dynamic balance with nature, not as animals do, but as human beings only could, but in a way that we have now lost. Well, what, how have we lost it and what have we lost? How we have lost it is uh, the, the way in which these psychoactive compounds that were being brought into the diet were acting is they were psycholytic upon the formation of the ego. They literally suppressed the formulation of the e the formation of the ego and promoted instead collectivist tribal partnership values which were operating intuitionally in a resonance relationship with the, the feminine vegetable matrix of the planet. In other words, nothing was verbalized, everything was felt, everything was intuited. And regularly, at the new and full moon, these small groups of hunter-gatherers, later pastoralists, gathered and uh, took these hallucinogenic plants and dissolved boundaries and engaged in group sex and annealed, a new word that we've brought in here, annealed the irregularities that had cropped up in people's personal self-imaging in the interval since the last <coughs> session. And this kept everything uh, grounded on the plane of that which is important, i.e. the values of the group, of the species, of dynamic balance with the ecosystem, and so forth and so on. Well, when this was disrupted, and the supplies of these plants were diminished, and new religious forms arose, and the time between the great festivals grew longer and longer, uh, the ego begins to take hold first as a kind of cancerous aberration, but then quickly becoming a new style of behavior, which quickly then eliminates all other styles of behavior by suppressing access to the chaos. And this is the point I want to make, that there is between the ego and, and full understanding of reality a barrier, a problem, the fear of the ego to surrender to the fact of chaos. Chaos is what we have lost touch with. This is why it has been given a bad name, because it is feared by the dominant archetype of our world, which is the ego, which clenches, because 
its existence is uh, defined in terms of control. And the, the furious modeling process, and this will now sound like a knock on modeling, the furious modeling process that the ego endlessly carries out is an effort to fight the absence of closure. The ego wants closure, it wants a complete explanation. The beginning of wisdom, I believe, is the ability to accept an inherent messiness in your explanation of what's going on. Because nowhere is it writ that human minds should be able to give a full accounting of creation in all dimensions and on all levels. You know, Wittgenstein had this idea that philosophy should be what he called true enough. And, and I think that's a great idea. Let's just make it true enough, because that's as true as it can uh, be gotten. Well, so uh, the imagination is chaos. New forms are fetched out of this chaos. For me, the creative act is the letting down of the net of human imagination into the ocean of chaos on which we are suspended and the attempt to bring out of it ideas to bring out of it uh, you know sometimes and this is part this is my model for the psychedelic experience that it is the night sea journey that it is the lone fisherman on a tropical sea with his nets and you let these nets down and uh, Sometimes something tears through them that leads